So now that you've mastered the root five system, they are now, your roots are planted, the seeds are planted, the roots are starting to come out. They're starting to grow. You're getting it. You, you, you're mentally changed. You mentally transform the way that you're going to think and all that kind of stuff. But I want to point something out to you. Just like these planter boxes behind me, sometimes, unfortunately, without us realizing, something else can start to take root inside of our minds and inside of our daily habits. And when they first start to grow, you can't really recognize what it is. You might not even notice that it's there. But it too is creating a root system so strong that it might one day actually choke out what you're trying to produce. So for instance, these root boxes, they have beautiful flowers in them, beautiful flowers, maybe some, some plants, maybe some um, harvesting like tomatoes and, and such of that nature. But what else starts to grow? When there's nutrition and there's, and there's stuff that's starting to grow, weeds also have seeds. Weeds also have seeds and weeds also have roots. And unfortunately, weeds grow really, really deep roots and they start to choke out and steal nutrition from the roots that we started planting. Now, I really need to talk about this. We just spent so long developing what these roots are, rechanging the way that we thought about our mind and creating this new root system for ourselves. Now we need to also make sure that we are pulling weeds daily. We gotta pull weeds daily. And kind of similar to the last video in the Root 5 system when we talked about portion control, we have got to rip up these weeds quickly by knowing where they're coming from. So guilt trip center, we're gonna hop right into it, right in this, right here. Guilt trip center. If someone is shooting arrows at you, <laughs> at you, all of a sudden you get an arrow in your leg, oh my gosh, all of a sudden you get an arrow in your back, you get an arrow in your chest, wouldn't it be great to know where these arrows were coming from so that you can then get away from them, not be hit with arrows, <laughs> just like these weeds, you could just rip them up. You know where they're coming from so that when a seed lands, or you can totally move your box so a seed can't even land, a weed seed cannot even land in your block, in your box, in your planter, wherever you are. So that's what we really wanna talk about now. And a lot of the times going on that autopilot and that subconscious mind will kind of just take over. Your brain is trying to do whatever is easiest to survive. Because, <laughs> unfortunately, because we're not fighting for our lives every day anymore, we're worrying about the small, smallest little things that don't really matter in the scheme of things. But our brain, so if you even just think about the craziness that we're able to walk and not bump into things, our subconscious mind is constantly at crazy work, doing its job really, really awesomely. But our subconscious mind can also get us into a lot of trouble. Because if you're not thinking, you're not taking hold of every thought saying, oh, is this a good seed or a bad seed? And then categorizing it and either throwing it away or keeping it. And if you're not doing that every single day, all the time, you're gonna get some bad seeds in there. Subconsciously, the seed's just gonna get planted, the roots are gonna start to come down, and then all the work that you did could be damaged. It's not gonna go away. You're, you're not gonna have to uproot the tomatoes, but some of the tomatoes might not bloom now. All right, so really thinking about those things. So the subconscious mind, where do our thoughts kind of come from? Our thoughts are accumulated over a long period of time. So this can get really, really deep. Uh, we're not gonna go super deep in this one, but I just wanna kind of bring an awareness to you of where these subconscious kind of thoughts kind of come from. How you think about health and fitness. There's a lot of family patterns in there. There's a lot of things, a lot of ways that, oh, my, I, I, I was raised a certain way. My family had this kind of thing. I'll tell you right now, I knew nothing about health or fitness or any of that. That was all learned because I consciously went out and learned about it and I didn't like the way I felt and it, it made me pursue a different path. I grew up on meatloaf, ham with pineapple, and spaghetti and meatballs. That was it. That was it. Not such healthy food. Sometimes we'd have, you know, um, like green beans in a can. <laughs> but that was about it. That's how I grew up and I decided to go out there consciously and do it. Social media. Social media, the media, if you turn on the TV, you turn on the news, all of those things are playing a role and playing a factor into how you're feeling about your body and about your health. Whether you think you're doing something right or wrong, you're contrasting to social media, on the media, on TV, things that you're seeing on TV shows. 
that starts to become the normal if you're not careful. If you're in that subconscious type of mind, that starts to look like the normal. And then if you're different from that, you beat yourself up, you start the guilt trip, you're not in the right path, you don't think so. And then it's, it's, a, bad, it's a bad place to be. It's not really good. You're in comparison. And then you feel like you're in a rat race to try to keep up with them, right? I get it. But you want to live like nobody else so that you can live like nobody else. You want to live like nobody else so you can live like nobody else. That's from Dave Ramsey, Financial Peace University. I like that in this stage too. You know, I eat like nobody else so that I can live like nobody else. And everyone's all like, oh, you have such great, you know, you have such great control and all this kind of stuff. Like, no, I just totally transformed the way that I think about this. I got my root five down and nobody's going to be able to uproot me. I'm in there, man. And I don't allow social media or the media to determine my thoughts anymore. I used to. I definitely used to. I used to sit down and just watch TV like crazy. I used to go on social media and just compare, 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 compare. And now, before you say that you don't do these things, I want you to really investigate your day. I want you to really start to pay attention. How many times am I on social media? Who is on my social media feed? Is it filled with people who are uplifting, who are educating me, who are um, giving me words of wisdom? Or is it filled with people who are complaining, who are talking, uh, trying to sell me products, who are, you know, just constantly in my face about what I'm not doing right? What is it? What does your feed really, really consist of? You're, I'm talking Facebook. I'm talking Pinterest. I'm talking Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, whatever you're on. What is it really filled with? And some of the, this, this has got to be one of the hardest parts of this program. The people that are toxic, where you're having an awesome day, you're like, I'm going to go on Facebook. You make a nice post about how great your day is going and how something amazing really happened. And then you're scrolling and then you see, you know, that cousin who's always complaining about everything and it kills your day. And you're just like, dang. If somebody on your feed is affecting you that much, you got to get rid of them. And the cool part is, is that you can actually go in, you can still be friends with them and you just don't see their posts anymore. Don't follow them anymore. Go to their page. If it says that you're following them, unfollow them. You can hide this post from that person. Then you're going to communicate to Facebook and say, I don't want to see this person anymore. I still want to be friends with them because I don't want them to get offended, but I don't want to see them anymore. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't want that neural pathway of that negative feeling coming in anymore. All right. So take a, take really, really good inventory of where you're spending your time, where you're allowing your thoughts to come from, and then go ahead and, and test them whether against where you want to go and see if those, those places will fuel that direction or if they're fueling a different direction. All right, so go ahead and do that now.